Hey, hey guys, it's Allie, back with Awakening with Allie, and I'm so excited for today's guest. I have such an incredible guest with you guys, and you probably know him, and if you don't, you're going to like just love him. I have David Lawrence Palmer, who is known as the Leo King, and he owns and operates multiple OTT media corporations. He is has 12th House Media founder of High Vibe TV and Spiritual Dance Music. And guys, he's a celebrity astrologer if you don't know who he is. Like he's been featured everywhere, like ET being like one of the main places. He's making waves in the media with what he's doing as a media spiritual influencer. He's been on TV for over a decade, but I want him to tell like all about himself, enough about what I'm sharing. So thank you for being here, David. I'm so excited to have you. Oh, thanks for having me, Allie. Truly happy to be on your podcast and love your energy, love your vibe. So thank you to be here. Cool. Well, I'm so excited. So, I mean, you've been doing this for quite some time. Could you tell my, you know, listeners or, you know, viewers, like how you got into this? Were you always in astrology? Like what's the background? Give us, give us the, 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 the breakdown of how you got here <laughs> or have you always been in this right. space? I mean, yeah, I would say as an astrologer, you're already signed up into it before birth. Like I always feel like the biggest free will choice we have is the choice that we made to come down here. So yeah, I was into astrology before I even was conscious in this life of it, but yeah, I mean the, 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 the reality 3d story would be, I mean, I was, my mom told me I was a Leo when I was like eight, there was uh men is from Mars. Women are from Venus. That book she had. And I asked her what it was <laughs> the idea of like, what people are connected and men and women are connected to Mars and Venus. Like then, you know, AOL chat and going to high, or going to seventh and eighth grade and asking girls what their signs were and looking on AOL when it just came out. I love and it. That's really where it started was AOL for me. But AOL, like, oh my God. I remember AOL. AOL and the, the dial up. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I was in those teen chats, but then that was the beginning of, you know, going to websites. So I found the Mayan, I actually went into the whole Mayan calendar 2012, um, you know, long count calendar ending. And there was this old HTML website and I read it all night. I, even in high school, I was up till four in the morning and up at 6 a.m. for water polo or whatever, up all night researching on AOL and finding weird stuff. I was into Timothy Leary watching his live stream when he died in 96. Like it was crazy. Oh, wow. Like it was, it was, it was like, that's where I was when I was like 12 and 13 and 14. <laughs> <laughs> like I was just like into that while I was still into going to parties with everybody and being the water polo captain, varsity, you know, and doing volleyball and all that. I was doing it all. Like you would never know at that time. Like So it was kind I, of an undercover yeah. thing when you were young, but you were always into it. Yeah, I was always into it, but it was more like experimentation. Like, the you know, well, I remember I always say this story. It's got, some people already know, it, but it's just like, I, I remember I was dating the, the different cheerleaders at my high school and it was like, some guy was like, they're all the same. I'm like, no, that Pisces <laughs> one's so different than that one, that whatever sign that that one might be. Right. And like, I was like, they're way different. They're all not the same. Right. Like, and so, yeah. and I know that that is a weird way to look at it, but I remember being like, no, not everybody is the same. And I, especially being the water polo captain, I'm like, no, this guy's weak in the pool. This guy's too afraid. He's not going to be that great, but that guy is a <laughs> fast swimmer and this guy, you know, like everybody's different, right? So astrology is amazing because everybody's different, even though the sun signs make people think that we're all the same and maybe a tribe. It, it, there's similar qualities, but astrology goes so much deeper. And I went to the military when I was 18 to the U.S. Navy as a rescue swimmer. And then I worked on F-18s. Oh, and wow. then I, got, I got out of that um, and literally was working at a boat dealership on the beach and I was the parts manager. So when it was winter, not a lot of customers came in and cable internet now was out and stuff. And that's when I started running charts. And then I started studying with astrologers. And then that's pretty much, I mean, it never, you know, and that was 19, 20 years or 20 years old. So by 20 years old, I was doing charts and I was all into it. I was doing tarot readings and scaring my friends after, <laughs> ra after raves. I used to go to a lot. I was a big raver. So okay. I was in the dance scene, like really, really way back, like in the early 2000s. So yeah. it was like, you know, you, you stay up all night after those races <laughs> and then you all hang out. And then I would pull out my, my tarot cards. And back then it wasn't like today where you could like find 10,000 decks. Like it was like to go find tarot cards. You had to go to either a tarot spiritual shop, which were not around a lot. 
right or like we call them here in southern california like swap meets but you know they're called like you know flea markets other places like the psychic at the flea market, you know, <laughs> the writer Wayne Harrow said, you know what I mean? Like it was like that. And people were freaked out. Like what? Especially my guy <laughs> friends. They were like, what? But I, you know, it was, it was, you know, I, people, it, it was like a seventies, like trick. Like, I guess you could say, right. The guys always used to be like, Hey, what's your sign? I literally was doing that in the early two thousands and like people, but they didn't know that that existed in the seventies. It like had died. So it was like one of those things where I'm like, we bringing it back. Like, hey, want me to do your tarot cards? Like, what? I have no idea what those things are. Is that like the Ouija board? <laughs> I'm like, man, you know, like it was, it was, it, and that was the whole purpose of where I'm at today still, where, you know, I've spent this last 14 years making astrology cool. Like, like yeah, that was totally. the whole point. Like, and, you know, nobody was doing any of that stuff. Like it was, it was, it was like to where anywhere I went, I was being judged. I mean, you name it. Like, it was crazy. And even being on TV and doing it, I was the first astrologer to ever do reality television. And so it was oh, like, wow. it was crazy having like the attacks from the media, which is all on my YouTube, all those attacks and stuff from Jimmy Kimmel to you name him, all the celebrities at the time, like making fun of astrology and who's this astrologer DJ and they that's because i don't want you to take away from them <laughs> they're the stars <laughs> i mean well uh, yeah well jimmy jimmy kimmel's a scorpio and and he he really just is such a non-believer and i mean after the things he yeah. said in 2021 about you know uh, people who have the shot and don't you know like totally you know, they should go to the hospital and they should die basically yeah pretty much uh, basically yeah. where <laughs> <laughs> and for me, when I saw that, I went, okay, I don't feel so weird that he made fun of astrology. Totally. You're uh, like, oh, this makes, this makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That took 11 years to finally, cause in 2010 is when he was, you know, so right out the gate doing all these TV shows and all that stuff and trying to bring astrology to the masses. Yeah. It was like the biggest hurt, like in my life, like, wow, people do not want astrology. Now it's a different story. Totally. Well, and I can imagine back then people were also like super fearful, right? Because people will tell you it's, you know, it's demonic, it's wrong, it's this, it's that. There's all kinds of, you know, connotations. And it's like you were trying to bring it in a space of like, no, 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 this is something like I literally have had since I was a kid. Like, let me share it with you. Let me share my gift. And people are like, whoa, what's this? I'm freaked out. Whereas now people are like, wait, 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 what's going on in the world? Tell me, tell me what's happening. <laughs> Like literally, or it's, it's become a trend, which I don't think it's a bad thing. I, you know, like it's, I don't, I wouldn't call it trendy. It's a trend. It's like yeah. people are finding honestly ways to change their lives and be better people through. I don't care if it's a small TikTok video or a deep, long, you know, really esoteric astrology talk into really deep spiritual stuff. Yeah. I'm more on that end of it but i also bring the comedy to it too so it's like one yeah of those, that's what yeah. i love when i started following you and watching you i was like oh my god there's like comedy to it which is awesome <laughs> yeah the, you know and like, like doing the whole like kind of stand-up improv astrology channeled horoscope thing was like my thing so it was like a an evolutionary process you know i can't even believe it's been as long as it's been like i really it to, to be doing it as long as I have, you know, where now it's kind of been a thing over the last three, four years for people where it's like, yeah. oh, it's nice. You all don't realize what it was like, you know, every turn was very difficult or even getting on television back then was like, we can't do that. We'll, we'll do the psychic thing, but we won't. Right. Do yeah. We can't talk about that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Like, it was just only mediums because people on TV are only interested in that. <laughs> so to, to to get production companies and to get television shows and to get networks to be cool with astrology was like I had to like use like my model personality and I had to use the reality show personality and I had to use that and talk about things I really didn't want to talk about but to get it to where we're at today like literally yeah. going through those fights and going through those like you know those weird looks in the corner like like that was hard that oh, yeah, like, I'm sure that, that's what I don't you know, if, if I were to use, you know, I've talked about these stories a lot on a lot of podcasts and stuff. But if I were to give you something unique, like I really have never talked so much about how hard it was and that people didn't realize, like I was really fighting for the mainstream to accept it for a decade. Mm -hmm. and, and finally, you know, right before the pandemic, Steve Harvey, just like I don't even though I have agents and all that stuff, 
they weren't booking me. It was like they, like Steve Harvey's crew directly hit me up and we did the longest segment of astrology on national television, especially on when you're in network and not cable, right? And yeah, that that segment was like, I finally was like, thank God, like it, we're here. If Steve Harvey is having me on and help a girl mm -hmm. find love and give me three charts of people I don't even know, can't even see and say which one's the best for her. And then I don't know, oh, they're going to throw those guys up there and I'm going to have to be there with her and she's going to have to pick the guys and I have to be right. <laughs> you know, that that she picked one of the guys that that I would say astrologically. Right. Was correct. So like, that's the kind of stuff it takes, uh, you know, and, and you don't see a lot of that. Oh, no, definitely not. No, and I mean, I get it, obviously, coming from, you know, the reality world and styling world and all that and being in the behind the scenes as well as on camera, in front of the camera. And you're right, it's very vulnerable. It's very intimidating. There's a lot of opinions. There's a lot of experts who want to tell you what to do. I mean, there's a lot of a lot and, it's, and it can be really overwhelming and really vulnerable. And I think it's cool that you share that being where you are now, because it's true. It's like people don't see that. They don't see like truly the blood, sweat and tears. They don't see. And especially for you, it was like a whole spiritual level because it's like, okay, when you're trying to just be in that space period, it's hard, but then you add on like your actual, like gift and what you were doing and like, wasn't out there. It wasn't mainstream. It wasn't really talked about. And you really put yourself in a vulnerable place to be able not only to like talk about it, but like to share it and bring it in to be like, Hey, this is something you can actually like use in your life. If you're actually being willing to, you know, accept this and, and, you know, and bring it in and, you know, that's a big deal. Well, thanks. I mean, I, 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 I would think so. I, I feel like you bring up such great points about the industry and how one already now I'm, and I'm I don't know if you're dealing with it, but now after this pandemic and where we're at with things like now, if you ever were in Hollywood, you're assumed that you're now part of the demonic cult or something. Oh, totally. Right? So for sure. Yeah. I'm already dealing with that by being an astrologer. So of it's course. like now I'm dealing with it twice. I'm like, wait, yeah. now, now I'm dealing with it because I was doing it in Hollywood to actually try and do this deep spiritual work. And I had to, you know, they wouldn't buy that spiritual deep stuff. So I would have to do the more mundane, like, mm -hmm. you know, what's Justin Bieber going to be doing? Or especially like people don't realize I was on Kiki Palmer in 2014. And oh that God, I styled Kiki Palmer for a while. <laughs> oh, cool. She's she's awesome. And her and I have the same yeah. last name. And that's actually a great episode. But, you know, she was that cool. She was the youngest TV host of all time and uh as a female too but also as any man or, fe or female yeah. at all like crazy right and she was that cool to be able to do this huge segment but i remember having a panic attack <laughs> right before walking on because you know all the bet producers are like okay well you're gonna be talking about all these couples and they're all bet stars because if you're on bet like you become a of BET course. star. Oh, yeah. it's like really oh, yeah. weird. bet has like mm -hmm. they're the only people don't realize like they it's like a thing like if you're on yes BET, they have their like, own yeah they have their totally. own like stars and they, if you talk anything negative you'll never have a job in this industry again kind of thing, right <laughs> and i'm like it's 2014 i'm looking at the planets going and i have to talk about beyonce and jay-z i'm like uh, and i'm gonna t and i'm not gonna hold my tongue back i'm gonna say that they're gonna have really bad problems and they're gonna have to there's gonna be some c crazy crap and literally i predicted that he would cheat and like all that crazy stuff, right? Right, For right. Fifteen, totally. but they kind of edited it weird at that point and said, "Oh well, you know, we hope that they'll be all right." But like the panic attack of like realizing, like, man, people don't realize how much they actually try to shut you up. They don't. Oh want yeah, and how much they edit forward. and how much they change of like what you're doing. And oh my gosh, that was like, yeah. Every time I would do something, I'd, I'd watch it back. I'd be like, wait, I didn't, well, I didn't say it like that. <laughs> it's like you right. know, but that's yeah. that's what they do. That's that's how it rolls I mean you know but like you said like you were finally able to push it through and bring it into the mainstream which is really cool because now obviously like people are actually looking for it people like you said are actually using it to you know better their lives to actually say like oh I'm not just you know like for me right like I you know I used to just think like oh I'm a cancer and that never resonated for me because I was like well, I'm not really someone who like goes in my shell. I mean, I guess I do when I do inward work, but other than that, I'm pretty extroverted. And it just like, it just never resonated like most of the things about it. And so I like, I would always like ponder like, how is that possible? Like everyone says like your sign is your sign. But then when you start to learn like, oh, you're rising, oh, you're this, oh, you're that. And you're like, oh, and then you start looking at those other parts of you and it's like, 
oh, this makes sense. This is why I'm emotional. And I'm like this, oh, this makes sense. This is why this, and now, you know, being a mom, you know, of three, like finding out, you know, like my kids signs and figuring out like, you know, pieces to them to better understand them and how they operate. Like, oh, this one's going to be more, you know, strong and powerful. This is going to be more sensitive about this. And like Mm -hmm. actually being able to be conscious of that, like as a conscious parent has been so much more helpful for me, at least as a new mom, like versus just being like, oh, okay, well, my kid's this and they're supposedly like this, you know, because then it's so in a box instead of like their uniqueness. Yeah. And that's what makes it so beautiful because you can, whether it's a friend, whether it's family, whether it's your children, you know, it's like you actually get to a process with astrology where you're like, you know what? I know they're going through this. This person's going through this in my life. And it's like maybe instead of taking it so personally, how somebody might be going through something, it's like as an astrologer, I'll be like, you know, this is a really going to be a, the roughest year of their life that I will ever see in their whole. If I were to go 100 years, I'd be like, this will be right. the hardest year of their life. Like, so it's like it helps you consciously realize like, my own needs and wants, my own ego wants of what you want somebody else to be like. That's just, that's just, I think astrology on the deepest level, that's what it does is it helps you relate with people better. Number one, it's a language Definitely. that like people either speak or they don't, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then two, it's the, it's the ability to be able to be like, you know what, like this, is, it always teaches you. It's never about me when you're looking at somebody else. Like, it's like, what right. it, it really helps you look at other people in front of yourself to understand what they're going through, understand their traits, their things, and where, especially where they're at, you know? And, and when you understand that, it totally takes away your own, like, version of wherever the ego is. And I feel like that's a lot of the problem with society today is people just are like, you know, they should be doing this. Like, he should have called me back. Like, and that, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you yeah. know, and I, it's, like, it's like, it's not, my dad used to say, well, that's a great, I, I love astrology, son. You know why? Because it's just a great excuse. You can just blame it on the planets, uh, you know. In life. <laughs> and, you know, he was a double Aquarius. But it's like, that is true. I guess some people could, but it's like, it's not so much about the person using it. It's the observer that yes. understands it. That's the point that I'm coming across is, right? It's like, you know, they're going through a lot, you know, and they won't have an excuse after that one year or whatever it might be, right? Like, but- right. It's like you could see so much out of people, not only how they are, but what they're going through. And I think that's the that's the real deep stuff or what we're all going through as a collective is what I focus so much on. Yeah. And 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 that's really where that was a crazy idea back in 2008 and nine when I started. It was like, you're going to do what you're going to do collective horoscopes like talking about the collective consciousness. Isn't it the collective unconscious? I'm like. <laughs> Man, so every step of the way is always a, uh, when you go your own path, it's always one of those things that you just, there's way more there for you, especially facing all those fears. And in astrology, there was a lot of fears and they continue today, but you just can't be afraid and you have to go your own route, you know? Yeah. And I love that you said that because I think especially like on my show, I'm all about, you know, being awakening with Ali. It's like, what was your awakening? And then like, how can I help empower you through, you know, or how can we discuss what empowered you through and like what awakened you? Because I think so many obviously getting into the collective consciousness are going through these awakenings right now are having so many shifts of, I don't want to be in this job. I don't want to be dating this person. I don't want to be in this life. What, you know, this situation, whatever it may be, you know, but how do I change it? I've been stuck here in this comfortable position. That's not actually comfortable. And then of course, you know, COVID pandemic, all the things that shook the world up, I believe has been the catalyst for all this. And it's all like brought it all up to the surface. And now people are having to essentially see it, do the shadow work and be like, oh, I wasn't really happy, but I'll just pretend to be happy for all these years. And now I can't pretend, you know? And so I tell people, I'm like, well, you know, when you like woke up, like, like where you have to think about, like, you're willing to step into what you just said, like that true individuality, that true sovereignty of like who you are. And you know, I get that it's, it's, it's hard. So, I mean, I love that you speak to the collective and everything you just said. So could we dive into that? Could you share, like, you know, as you decided to get into that work and start studying that, like from what you first started with, where the collective was many years ago to where we are now, mm-hmm. like, 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 but what's that first, you know, kind of like for you, like taking us back to like where we've gotten to now, because I'm sure for you, again, speaking to you being the observer, us being the observer with other people, like, what was that like to, to kind of see that shift? I think the, the most deepest part of the awakening 
for me, but also I think for anybody who really starts to look and use the lens of astrology with the world, which is called mundane astrology, even though that's a, I don't call it that. That's why I started calling them collective horoscopes. And then if you notice anybody who says that around, it's like, thanks. Um, <laughs> but that was the crazy part. It was like the lens at the time of like, let's say for my awakenings, 2004 through five and six were my, was my spiritual awakening, which was a very, very weird time to have a spiritual awakening. I mean, you have to remember early, there, you know, like, I mean, like for what I've read, doesn't that seem like earlier than a lot of people that, yeah, it was, it, I mean, that was like my space was, was not even full blown, you know, it was, it, it was, I mean, there was no iPhone, there was no, you know, so like resources were still books or you were lucky to even find anybody who we could talk to about it. Like, yeah, unless you went to like a conference for it. So, and I was really young. So to, for me, it was psychedelics and it was the rave scene and to be looking at the world and what was going on by, by being in the military and seeing what was happening with the Iraq war and 9-11. And I was like, using astrology and being like whoa this is this is going to be the craziest situations that will happen by 2012 that we will never feel like we're on the same vibration ever again so i focused a lot of the work on 2012 so back in 2012 when it was finally at that point you know the years prior were just doing shows that were more light and fun and, and, and getting people to like, what's a Mercury retrograde and stuff like that. Right. And this is back when YouTube, I mean, you was still in four three, not like 69. <laughs> like we're in now. And so like, it was like, you know, we were doing that kind of stuff. And I was working with soul garden, Christopher with techie. And we, we were doing like a cool show called astro gossip, talking about the news and how it related to astrology to kind of wake people up. But it was that 2012 work I was doing. And like, there was only like, 10 blogs back then that I could find wow. that were consistently updating people of like what's happening astrologically and going into way deeper forms of that, of like understanding, you know, what's happening in our galaxy right now. Cause the understanding is too hard for many people to contemplate when you get to galactic consciousness. It's yeah. like galactic consciousness is a thing that still has not taken off. And like, that's been like the, I think the hardest part whether people through the pandemic and they might go through their shadows and stuff. It's like the great awakening is cosmic consciousness because that's really what, and not planetary, like celestial, that's celestial cosmic meaning beyond our solar system and understanding what are those patterns. And that's what the Mayans were doing. And, mm -hmm. and, and 2012 work was a world that, literally people don't realize a, a whole 13 Bakhtun system ended and we're in this in-between universe moment in between mm -hmm. universes and it's not just going to go away there's not some moment when it's all gonna that when people finally detach from my life prior to 2012 which you know you go 13 14 15 you already were feeling it weird, but a lot, it's easy to kind of push it off. 2020 was like the, oh gosh. And then yeah. related to more of the reality when really that was actually the, the galactic and what's happening here in this solar system and what's happening here on this earth, finally reaching a point of like, you let go yet? No. Oh, okay. Well then keep having fun. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and, and it's still going to continue that way no matter how good the astrology might look or how bad it might look, it, it's, it's more about when people realize we're in between universes. Like we're literally, like there's another universe opening up and there's another, there's another observer besides God that's observing at the same time too. And that when, when people start tapping in and realizing that's why it feels weird that we're being observed by another life force with whether or not that has good intentions or not, and that also might be on might is way beyond our even understanding whether you want to, you know, people always like to say AI. I'm just going right down to it because like I'm just like, yeah, I don't like to play with all the like toys. Like I'm just like, let's go to the deep stuff. 
that's what people's issue is not so much of in their life. It's it's much more of whether they're really ready to tap into so many higher conscious realms and, and so many people call them dimensions, you know, and there's too, there's a lot of new age talk out there, right. but it's actually a lot simpler. It's really about galactic consciousness, understanding where the sun is in our, in our solar system, but in our galaxy and how that is in alignment you know, at the galactic understanding of the ecliptic and the equator. So like we're, we're literally at the middle of this flat disc of our galaxy mm. and we're rising now to another, the top portion of it, just how we move in seasons on the earth and how the sun works. The sun has its own seasons in our, its galactic shift. And so this is also where we get so much of all of the galaxy and there's this weird energy with all the other galaxies that are all starting to align and all these systems lining. So you get, that's what I'm saying. We're getting these other forms of what, you know, if you were to take somebody back in like the Renaissance period in the early 1500s, you know, to them, it's like me and God, right? Like it's like, da, 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 da. And then there's like, there was the ideas of great astrologers back then bringing these ideas of the celestial, the super celestial. And then you know, the horizon of eternity, like John D's work. And it was like, wow, like they were doing it too, but they also knew whether it was Nostradamus predicting that, you know, people are just aren't going to get it or John D writing one out of every million. But if you take the people at that time, he actually was even saying one out of a billion will ever get it. Mm. That, that most people just will not take the time to do the long and tedious inspirational work that's right in front of their face like it, like you can go out every night and go look at what's happening and understand those patterns and then apply them in a deeper sense to the galactic understanding and you'll finally start to understand what's going on but to 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 not pay attention to it it it's again be, being stuck in the in the same shoebox and and waiting for the shoebox to stop smelling or something when it gets moved <laughs> in a different place or something with, with, with thinking that it'll be better and will stay a certain way. Like we're in a, we're in a place that is so beyond the comprehension of our collective of understanding who we really are, what, what, what got down here, what, what history really had the real recorded history that, you know, a lot of it was washed away, but a lot mm -hmm. of it has been with all of our ancient ancestors they left all the clues. It's just whether or not we're going to start applying them. And when we're not, I mean, everything's, you know, flipped upside down. It's an inverse reality. Now it's like, you would think that people like doctors who take a Hippocratic oath would use astrology since Hippoc Hippocrates in 400 BC is what created the father of medicine, the way that doctors are supposed to handle patients and understand mm. how to care that Hippocratic oath is, from Hippocrates and he even says a physician that does not know astrology should not practice astrology or the original translation was is a fool mm. so you have every doctor today thinking they know what how to fix the pandemic or what to do and they're not even using astrology and they think it's crap no wonder the whole system's gone I mean there's little things like that where it's like I didn't know that that's pretty cool oh yeah why what like so every Hippocratic oath is not is a fool if they don't apply that with understanding their work and all the zodiac from Aries down to Pisces, the two fish, your feet literally is how to live your life and your health. And everybody's different. You know, I'm a Leo, like don't make a Leo vegan. Right. Not gonna, <laughs> not gonna be good, you know? So it's yeah. like everybody's different, you know, but everybody thinks in the spiritual community that they have this one way and and that's the only way for it to be and right and and or that they you know and that's what's kind of a scary thing is what's really now coming in are all these different energies from stuff outside of our solar system and even if you want to use science especially because as an astrologer you have to use astronomy and you have to use the cosmology understanding of our universe there's there are solar rays from our sun that have been building up that why we're seeing so many more solar flares there's there's the magnetic i've been, I've been seeing that yeah right but that's a lot of it what people don't realize is 
as the planets go around the sun, there's also the cosmic rays that are coming in and there's other electromagnetic waves coming from our galaxy itself. And the sun becomes like a, a magnet because it's magnetized and it takes all that. And then it starts to like, if you ever, you know, rub your feet on the carpet and electromagnetism and mm -hmm. you touch somebody, the sun will eventually make a minor Nova event and like shake, it'll shake it all off. And then it will look at our, you know, our, if you look at our earth right now, we have a, a protective shield of the electromagnetic field that is so weak right now. So all those solar flares coming in are affecting people, but people are thinking something else, right? Like, um, I didn't drink my alkaline water enough today. <laughs> but everything that is happening that the mind's predicted and everything, and as we shift into this new idea of what a universe is, you know, when people probably hear this, they're probably like, what's a new universe? Well, that's the whole point is a universe is defined by however the conscious energies define it. There's mm, a so lot the of collective out consciousness, there. basically, of how Correct, the but yeah, but what's grappling that collective consciousness now to turn a universe around to its own idea of what it is? And right, using, versus the programming. Right. And there's a lot of that right now. And mm -hmm. it's it's even got a, uh, I would say, a deep virus that looks like it's not a virus, where it's like, we're awakening and we're doing all these great things, but actually turning the ship over the side of the flat earth if you want to call it that <laughs> like 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 literally where it's 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 like making people believe that if you know everything's gonna be all right and everything's gonna be fine without looking at like whoa like if you don't understand where it's coming from and understand literally how it's coming and the timing of events and the understanding of the histor historical timings and what the warning shots have been fired from so many amazing people behind me. I have my, one of my libraries and I, I go buy books as, as far as I can. You think books are going to be a thing just in the next, do you think Barnes and Noble is going to make it? And do you yeah. think that our digital stuff is going to be able to be translated and saved? Give me whitewashed in one minute. Look at China right now. Like you can't airdrop in China and they're protesting everywhere. Apple oh yeah. Away the airdrop. Mm -hmm. So when you look at, like that's a King James Bible from 1625. You look in that, that's not the Bible they teach you at church. Mm -hmm. People have no idea when even they look at like the constitution online or they look at the, all the thing, all these things. When you look at the original books from the 1800s of them or anything, there's so much more in there. People are so programmed. I think they're overwhelmed and I think they're lost. But I think that they're the positive is everybody's ready for. Well, that's change. what I mean when I say the programming is like people are realizing that, like, whether it's program, whether you want to the matrix, like, whatever it is that, like, you've been following, you realize so much is not true and that doesn't resonate for you anymore. And so, hence the awakening, right? And it's like, okay, now, now what? <laughs> well, and I think, you know, that whole now what? I mean, a lot of it is going to be removing the programs. Mm hmm. No matter how <laughs> hard it seems to do that, right? I mean, even mm -hmm. if you see in today's world, there's so much fear still around. Yeah. Whether it's like, mm -hmm. like, can I say that? Or will people, you know, it's like, who yeah. cares? Will, will I be canceled? Yeah, totally. See what happens. Mm -hmm. If anything, they register you as like, let's not mess with that person's energy <laughs> because they actually <laughs> know what, what's up in themselves. Like the more the collective continues to kneel mm -hmm. in this form of, you know, penitent, like, like, like being, you know, weak in a way of like, I'm just going to, you know, be for the greater good, give away my energy. There is beings and humans and our history that have taken that for thousands yeah. of years and always done that. That's like the number one way they take away. Yeah, that, that, ain't, that ain't it. <laughs> like yeah. for a greater good and, and get on your knees and eager, give your arms and give it away. And da, 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 da. and that's that's how the, that's what the Catholic Church did. That's how they got rid of mm -hmm. the Knights Templar. That's how they got, you know, and the, that's why we went through dark ages in the 1300s. People don't realize, you know, people think it's just from the bubonic plague. 
a lot a lot of it again if you were to think of these times in this pandemic a great way to wash history and to wash away and people's energy is to yeah. keep a lot of things in the dark and not there's not a lot of art anymore people are you know oh nfts and all these things it's like that's great but there's like there's like a sense that we're we're, we're in such a different way of doing things that we're all going to have to really find are we doing things from a place that's actually going to build the universe we really want? Or are we doing it because you're just following what the other person said that looks right. cool that you think is the new cool thing without coming out with your own unique version of it, which is that's the true awakening is always mm -hmm. your own understanding of your own code, your own unique self and realizing that the whole entire true divine program, but the divine mission, the divine fate is already within you. And, yeah, and all that's the powerfully said. To come yeah. out, but but most people are just like, no, I need to still find it outside of myself. Or well, I and to, I need to be yeah. told, right? I need yeah. to be told what to do. I need to be told how I am going to do this. That you know, like, and and I've dealt with that too. Like, but the more I unprogram, the more I do the inner work. Like, the harder sometimes it is because people around me are like, "What are you talking about? Like, no, it should be this. No, it should." And I'm like. No, that hasn't worked for me. So I'm going to do things differently, but it's, it's true. It, like it makes you totally have to go. So within, because the outside around you is so much noise. It is so much programming. It is so much naysayers saying, you know, I have to follow this. I have to be this. I have to do this, you know, which is why I created my show because I felt so alone in my awakening. And I was just like, I got to talk about this. <laughs> I don't know what right. I'm going to do, but I'm going to talk about this, you know? And then it was like, started meeting other people who were like, oh yeah, I went through a dark night of soul. Oh yeah, no, I know what that is. And I'm like, oh, there was a name for it. <laughs> <laughs> it was right. like all, all of a sudden, like you start finding people who have also, you know, been through it or have a gift like you that like, you know, know what's going on. You're like, oh, cool. I don't feel so crazy. I'm still feeling a little right. crazy, but I don't feel so crazy. Now I've got resources. Now I've got people that I can, you know, when I'm claiming my own sovereignty, I can see other people have done it too. And now they're in a really beautiful place, though it might've taken a moment to get there. And so, yeah, no, I appreciate, you know, all that you just said. And that was so powerful how you said it being within you. Cause I think you're right. Like so much of the issues, especially over the last few years and still right now is everyone's looking outside for permission, for confirmation, for build up, for confidence. I mean, the list goes on, you know, and, um, it does. It, it, you know, and, and I mean, I even realized in my own journey, you know, with being a celebrity stylist, like I got so lost in that world because I was supposed to show up a certain way and I was supposed to be a certain, you know, this and certain that. And I, and I just, got so dark and like so fed up because between like the pressure and then like I mean you know you've been around it all between everything I was just like my soul felt like it was being like sucked like I just felt like sucked right. dry like there was no more like happiness there was no more freedom there was just no more any part of me it was like I have all this other stuff in me and when I had to like purge and let go of all that and go through my own journey. Like it got super dark before I was able to get <laughs> to the other side because I was like, what am I doing? Like, this is who I've been for so many years. This is my title. Like, this is what, you know, I've been doing for so long. Like how, how am I going to just like walk away? But I needed to, because it was just like, I needed to be able to come back to me. Like you said, so beautifully, like to find what was within me, my own power, my own gifts and everything, and not just feel so like I have to do what everybody else says, because that's what they're telling me. And I'm being paid to do. Right. And that's so powerful that you found that and you're doing it. And I think that's the whole point is it, it doesn't have to look a certain way, like whatever makes you happy and fills you up. It doesn't matter if somebody else has done it and be like, well, somebody else is doing it. I need to do it different. You have to do whatever it is that you feel and just put it out there. However it is. Totally. Like, of course I do astrology and, uh, you know, tarot, right? Like doing tarot back in 2012 and 2013 on YouTube, go look, go look it up. Try and find it. When we were doing it, I was doing it with this man called One Feather. I remember people were like, One are, feather, you I love really, it. are you guys really going to put tarot on YouTube? Like that was like a thing that people were questioning. Like, I, I, I you really think that people are going to watch that? Now, <laughs> it's like <laughs> millions of, it'd be, it's insane. Millions and millions and millions of subscribers for people. Right right? Like it, it, billions of views. So it's like one of those things where it's like, who cares? Throw yeah. it out. I mean, I, I feel like we're at a point to where, you know, the collective itself 
and I'll, and I'll quote, actually, you know, Rick Levine uh, put it good. Him and I did a conference. Uh, we always, we do a lot of different stuff once in a while. And we, we were at conscious life expo in February of 2022 this year. And, and we did it. Uh, we had like an after talk at the panel and, and, you know, he said it back. It's like, it's like a collective schizophrenia is happening. Mm. And, and especially when Neptune's in Pisces, which has been since 2011, ironically, right before 2012. Right. Um, when it's in its home sign in Pisces, you know, it was a sign that is the last zodiac sign where it, it's 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 such a wide space in the zodiac too. It, it's where we look into the infinite. That's where we find our visions, our dreams, but it also is our unconscious. But if you really think also about the programming, it's it's extremely big and it's almost it it, it rules drugs. Look at all the drug things over the yeah. last, you know, mm -hmm. since then. And, and like what people are doing fentanyl in the middle of a street now oh like, i know and, the, and how know. many people are dying and you know you like start to realize like the collective is really like lost really mm -hmm. and they're they're dealing with depression suicide rates right now all these things because if you look at the last time neptune was in pisces in 1848 you know it was the gold rush it was like oh my gosh there's gold there and then everybody came and it was more like no there's no gold but we're gonna steal all your stuff and claim jumpers and really it was a guy named levi who made a, a <laughs> Made, made the most money with like, oh, I'm going to make the pants for all these guys who are out there trying to find little gold flakes. Jeez. Right. You know, and then on top of that, you have to remember, it's like, that's what the buildup to the civil war was, right? Like people thinking, oh yeah, I'm allowed to own a slave. The, the, <laughs> no problem. That's no big deal. It's like, what are you talking? What? People, like, <laughs> so there's people that are aware and then there's people that are completely lost in the sauce. And mm. especially where we're at now, Jupiter and Neptune, in Pisces, they, they haven't met since 1856. And that's when the country and they even if you, most people think the Civil War happened 1860. And that's because Lincoln got put in. And of course, the secession from the Union from the Southern Democrats, it was like in creating the Confederacy, right? It was like, no, it was 1856. It was a change of of a president. It was bleeding Kansas. It was states that were trying to be territories trying to become states. And then you know, people that wanted slavery were literally doing election fraud. Look at the last two years, the same yeah. astrology. It's like crazy to see wow. that like people are not aware. And like, what's the difference of keeping people locked up like in China right now? And not 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 putting it down. Mm -hmm. Our own government, like it's it's wild. We are in a place to where the collective is, and I think that's going to be what my heart, harsher part of this would be. I'm a very positive person, but the only way to stay positive is to also be real. And it's like, sure, with Saturn coming into Pisces in March of 2023, Pluto coming into Aquarius, that hasn't happened since, you know, 1777, right? When we saw the, the Revolutionary War, we haven't seen, you know, Saturn coming to Pisces, you know, for 30 years, but now it has Neptune here and we've never seen that in our lives. We'll never see that ever again, too, for the next three years that's coming up. Uh, we we are about to realize that most of this collective is completely insane and has wow. been so programmed out that the removal of that programming is going to be the most hardest task that we'll ever have. And that's connected to religion, that's mm -hmm. connected to so many different facets of 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 programming and that's what the age of pisces has been for the last couple thousand years so to see all these things ending and to see so many planets at the end of the zodiac for the last four years you know it feels like the end times for people and that's what's funny is it's the, the end of the age of pisces moving into aquarius right so there is this feeling where people think that the world is going to mm -hmm. end and 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 I'll be left behind and and all and 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 it and it feels that way but it's also like the signal that we are moving into the new age and and Aquarius is understanding you know how to serve but you understand your uniqueness it's not you know put on a mask and that's how you're serving because some right person is telling you to do it right it's what totally. you're doing within that you've come in uniquely to bring here and it's an air sign, it's intellectual, and it has an understanding of the cosmos. It has an understanding of where we're at in the divine. That's that's mm. what Uranus rules in Aquarius and the understanding of how to put all the, the dots together. And, and Uranus is the father of Kronos, which is Saturn, Satan, however you want to look at it. 
and mm. he gets banished by Saturn, his son, right? Who eats his own children. I mean, like people don't realize like all this stuff they're seeing is actually the Zodiac playing itself out with the planets in exact positions. It's not like it's, you know, oh, you know, the mythologies, whatever. It's like, well, it's kind of ironic that it is exactly playing out what wow. those mythol all the mythology was and then you're seeing the same stuff happening now so yeah. when you say some of those things that you hear like ah oh, babies and the weird stuff i'm like that's happening for sure as an astrologer if that's exactly what 2020's major conjunction in capricorn was where saturn rules and saturn was there ooh, ooh with pluto which deals death and all that, that we're seeing we're seeing what people don't want to believe. And that's the hardest part. They don't yeah. want to believe. So it's a cognitive dissonance. They don't want to. Everything's you know, conspiracy. Yeah. And and it's not. The conspiracy is that that there are many forces that have taken over good people who are now bad. But they don't even realize that they were taken over. So you can't really blame the person as much as mm -hmm. that we have to really be very cautious in these times and realize that like i said there's a third and multiple other now forces that are observing and mm -hmm. the, the realization as we come to this you know what i hope to be a conclusion in the next you know 50 years but i don't know if we'll really get there fully yet but 50 years right is holy cow we're coming up to like seeing above the clouds for the first time and realizing which we thought was this one god and, and which i still believe of course right but there's also that understanding of like what created that god that we believed was the god or is there other is what, what all these other entities and all these other things that have malicious intent becoming aware of them is almost like i don't want that no it's too, like people don't want to ever believe because right. the program to stay in the positive right when the positive mm -hmm. is to face the darkness that's what the sun has to do every day to take mm -hmm. out the darkness that's true. right yeah. so mm -hmm. the idea that this positivity you know is only through being positive in this kind of belief system now dogmatic religion of positivity like i'm sorry i don't want to be like tony robbins all day and running on a treadmill Right, the same way to, and to say positive and just like totally be in denial of what's going on and what all these things are that are starting to come in and take over people. You have, you know, do you really think that the technologies that we have today came from a human being? Yeah. Like True. these are the things that are going to be here to wake us up. But if people, you know, I, I, I had to get out of my own. I would say belief, right? Like that I I I came to a place where I'm like, I don't think people are going to be able, we're not going to be able to make it as far as waking everybody up because people have already been taken over. I still have to re remember to show up like how you do with your show to have people really talk about their awakenings and that the awakening never ends. Right, total. It's like this so, odd, I, I, unraveling of the onion consistently. <laughs> yeah, and the work's never over, right? Like, right like this idea of like oh yeah i'm gonna work and then i get to my moment of retirement and then that that's the number one signal you're gonna die within you know five years is retirement mm -hmm. but look at the numbers right like why because what's the purpose of being on this planet anymore if you're already telling the universe i'm done right i'm done being here i'm just gonna enjoy and just sit around and do venus things all day right and eat grapes and you know like quick you're right bye-bye <laughs> right it was nice to have you and that that's where we're at in the history too with where we're at for the rest of our lives is we're now on the other side we're on the side of where things go completely opposite of the way that we thought life would go and 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 it's not turning around it's not there's no the bus already took off the ships already took off there's no there's no going back, you know? Right. And like, that's okay. So we have to change it, like as a collective. Yeah. Because, yeah. But a we lot of it is- Consciously is, change is, it. Is, is, is realizing that there's nothing to be scared of. Look at the founding fathers, right? That was like, oh God, 
King George and you know the Redcoats and they're they they're too many and they have all the money and they have all have all this stuff. We have pitchforks. We have like a couple of people who know how to use guns. We got people who are staying loyal. You know, it's like, gosh, over ninety percent of the colonial population didn't want to be part of the war, or they just went, yeah, no, 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 King George, right? Like, get to remember that a very small portion of the people mm-hmm. in the thirteen colonies actually defeated and and created freedom. So. True. We're in those times right now. And most people just want to sit in the back and be like, yeah, I went to CVS. I got my Band-Aid and I'm I'm, I, I'm kind of a freedom, but I'm just going to, I don't want to get in trouble. I just want to still be able to just have my job and I want to have my 401k and I just want to be able to go to work and I just want to be able to go back to CVS again. True. It's like, really? You want to just live that little life still? Which everybody's allowed to do what they want to do, but totally. this is where we, it's not scary. It's right. scarier to not you know, give, give ourselves the chance to num- number one, actually get off the chains that have been on us by programming, mm-hmm. which is a new mm-hmm. system. And at the same time, realize what, what else is observing us? That's the deepest question, because that's what makes making people feel weird and odd and different is that is when a, a new observer comes in and you can see that in studies through people, right? Like when you take somebody in an FBI like interrogation and they see that glass they get even more weird like who's behind that glass right that's the big question now for us in the universe we always thought it was like pearly gates and one gate Mm -hmm. not one gate you know what i mean like like, whoa like that that's already for people like wait what do you mean and it's like we don't even know what the addresses are to these things i don't know if it's mr burns and he's going to release the hounds you know like there's there's all these things that we can't be afraid because it's almost like they're wanting to see what happens but at the same time there is if people really believe in free will and they're all about positivity well then that means that it's a free will universe and that means that these entities can do whatever they want totally literally Mm -hmm. positive or negative right it's it's really about realizing that we're in a trap and that we are actually the the super beings that have been told that we're like lower there's these yeah, higher we're beings here. above us yeah. and all that stuff mm-hmm. when they're the lower beings feeding on us and have trapped us into believing that we're the ones that there's all these higher entities above us that know more than us that do all this stuff when no they survive off our life force they survive off our love and our powerful energy and and we have to we have to we have to take back our powers and 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 bring the the beauty back to the universe it's more than yeah. the earth i mean it's it's way bigger than that now yeah wow and, yeah and that galactic consciousness is is a lot is, is a lot for people but you'll find more relief understanding that than w- what's happening or you know you know, worried about which politicians doing what all day. Like, you know, like it's so much bigger. And who's and who's guiding those policies now in life all around, whatever party, like mm-hmm. that, you know, people are like, oh, they can't be seen. They might be secret societies. Like this is bigger than that now. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's it's takeover. It's 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 program takeover. Yeah. It's like another level. Yeah. And, and, and they're using, like you said, the fear to be able to essentially continue to, to go up to those higher levels of takeover because they know that they know what they did with fear before. So they can do it again. Well, they have quantum computing now. Yeah, sure. So they can, all the metadata that has been in your whole life can be put in this quantum computer system. Now these quantum computers are insane. So they could take all the data of every single human in the world and all your data from even your MySpace days to your Facebook, to your Instagram, every message, every comment, everything of the whole, every text message on every phone that you ever had. And imagine if every human being so in, crazy. in two seconds be like, what time of day do, do males 25 to 49, you know, get, the weakest emotional energy. Boom. 
right. and then you could add all of your algorithms and they know exactly Crazy. what that is. But is it really humans that are doing that? Or is that the, you know, Google just even said that, oh yeah, we turned off our AI and it became self-aware, you know, just months ago. Yeah, I saw that. So it, is it humans or is it that, you know, if you ever saw War of the Worlds, right? Like the aliens were already here in earth under yeah, the ground I right? hear you. like it was already yeah, pre-planned right. prior right so it's like one of those things of like especially with where the astrology is at like to see that we've had so many planets in aquarius and then to see that that pluto's coming into aquarius pluto represents our deepest fears it represents what's hidden it represents this extreme desire and also this extreme desire to get rid of something mm. right and when it comes into Aquarius, it's other outside entities, other people that are foreign to us energetically, not human. So, wow. you know, the idea, like, also, if you just see where the world's going right now, like, people have to realize, like, the program, too, is like, you know, if where the economy's going right now and all that stuff, like, are, are you ready with Pluto coming into Aquarius to be like, oh, my friend's knocking on the door and has nowhere to go are you gonna take them in right. or have you been programmed to be like no these are gonna be questions that's what i'm saying is like people are not ready yet they're not even close to ready to the to the fragmenting of their they're holding on for dear life to think that this thing's gonna stay the way it is mm. it's not it's not wow and that's what happens at the end of Pluto and Capricorn. Like, keep the system going. Even I don't care if it dies at the end. Just keep it running till the end. Chuck the motor when it's done. You know, keep it running. Mm -hmm. Keep them on the keep them on life support until they get the will done. Uh, is the will done yet? Just keep up. You know what I mean? Like that's mm -hmm. the energy right now. Keep the stock Crazy. market going. Keep people in the illusion. Keep it all going. And it's all cracking. And even when the people are seeing the cracks and it's about to blow up in their face, they're just like, oh, well, they say it's not going to happen just yet. Right. It's, it's like, true. It's like, and, and so people aren't ready for how it's going to be. an We're at an X factor moment, right? Or some people call that a black swan moment. Like the the, the pandemic was the weakest fear thing I've ever seen in my life. People are, are not ready for what's coming next. They're not ready. Mm -hmm. So to the you, what's, com so to you what's coming next? <laughs> I mean, I'm about to do a big presentation about this for New Year's Eve, right? Like people have been waiting. I, every five years, I do my five-year pr predictions and I do mm. a huge lecture. So Rising Through the Darkness in 2017, I did. And I predicted everything from the exact dates of when you would see, I called it, of course, a plague, but I'm like, sure. plague's going to come and it's not going to be real. And it's going to be used to control people. And I mean, there's so many predictions of that, whether it was the iPhone factory thing I, that I called out that just happened and that they were going to dorm them and make them eat and not, and, and not leave. And that we're starting to see that look at the train strike right now. Yeah, and I saw that. Now they're forcing the, the government right now, Congress, Joe Biden is saying, you know what? We're going to force them to work and they're not going to be able to have sick pay. So in a that. world where it's like, take care of yourself, wear a mask, oh, me and all these other viruses. But no, 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 you're a trade worker. No, no, yeah. no, no. It no, just no. doesn't apply to you. Work, you know, get yeah. that stuff moving. Like how like crazy is that? Yep. That people are not ready to realize that with that even ready to fall, that's the end of movement of goods around America. Mm hmm. Right. So every system right now is at the end. Yeah, for right? sure. And so people have to be prepared for that and to let go of the attachment to it. Right. Because that's what's actually the good thing is when it it's, it's not about wishing for it to fall. It's about naturally watching that the universe is making these things fall for a reason and the opportunities that are there for us to understand what to do. But if you're so, if, if people are so lost and not knowing what to do with their lives already now, what are they going to do when actually real free will comes into reality? Yeah, it's true. That's why there is no free will because people can't even do anything with will yet. Not many. Well, and, and it's and it's victim mode, right? It's 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 like I, I'm the victim, so tell me what to do. How do I handle this? How do I handle that? And and 
like you said, not moving into their actual sovereignty, not actually. I mean, I had to recognize that with my own shit. It was like, oh, I'm creating all this. I'm doing all this. I'm not helping myself. I'm not fixing myself, you know? And it was just like, okay, no one's coming to save me. Let me, let me, let me work on myself, you know? And, but it's like a lot of people don't want to have that conversation with themselves. No. So go back to 1776, where we're exactly at right now. We're talking on the last day of November, right? Of November 30th yeah. of 2022, when we did this. And in 1776, right where Pluto is right now, same position. Uh, Washington, they had already lost New York. They already had lost so many ground. And he was on his hands and knees. And all the generals, they were all like, I don't know if we're going to make this revolution happen. And there was a big elephant in the room, right? The whole 13 colonies knew that this declaration was signed. All 13 colonies had agreed on it. And King George was just bringing ships of redcoats and they were now starting to pillage the towns and force people. Right. And that's why we have things like all of our amendments and bill of rights to protect from the military just can't come into your house and find quarters there. Right. Like they were just going, hey, nice house. Thank you. King George's. And there was like this elephant in the room that people don't want to, you know, like say like, well, what like there's these people that are speaking truth, but there's this horrible group of people that is controlling us. And what, I guess I'm just going to keep following them. I'm kind of rooting for the team underground. It's like, eventually it comes to a cracking point to where people are going to be, oh my God, I'm going to have to participate. Right. So they're going to be so cracked open essentially. Right. Correct. Correct. And, 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 you know, I've talked, I talked about this just recently, but you know, Washington had to actually he had to give an order to read a pamphlet done by, um, oh God, what was his name? I don't know why, but you know, uh, I don't know why. Cause I was just thinking of William Penn. I was on like another convo about William Penn. But it's not William <laughs> Penn. Uh, what's his name? I, uh, oh man. Anyway, it was a it's pamphlet. Okay, it's late. <laughs> yeah, it is late, but it was, um, it was about, these are the times that try men's souls. And it was the American crisis. It was done by what's his name? I can't, oh my gosh. You're asking me, and it'll I'm come, not, it'll I'm come not to someone me in a to second. It'll come for me in a second. I've been, I've yeah. been talking, I've been going through a lot the last couple of days. A lot. Of yeah, it's all good. But that, that's what's crazy is like he had to, he had to actually order men to like realize like this is an American crisis moment. These are the times that try all men and women. But back then, that was just sure. the way they said it because nobody wanted to do anything. Right. Everybody wanted to kind of like hopefully just the great thing will just change and we'll have to not have to participate that's not coming and so the the hard part of that was watching and where we're at now is the big elephant in the room is the whole entire world has just gotten completely gosh i don't even want to say that word but you know i'll be nice i'll I'll just say that has been let's just say mutilated or mm-hmm. fondled with mm-hmm. in the most inappropriate way. And there's a huge elephant in the room of what the heck is really going on with what has been injected into over half the population of the world. Mm-hmm. But nobody wants to just even question it from that. It's not well, nobody to... wants to talk about it because they don't, wants... it's cognitive dissonance. It's they don't. Yeah. You know, I mean, if, yeah. if, if I had that in me, which I don't, I would think, yeah, I hear you. False. Same. Same. I'd, have, I'd be having fucking panic attacks every day because yeah. There is no ingredients list. Why? It's just right. a white piece of paper. White piece of paper. And yeah. all like your blank, seeing, blank piece of paper. <laughs> and and you've been in the, you were lied to the whole time. Like yeah, 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 you're gonna be fine, and you'll never die, and you'll uh, all the mm-hmm. the you'll fact that people won't even acknowledge that mm-hmm. the lies and won't even acknowledge that. Where? How is this going to affect our military? How is this going to affect all of the every per like? You have to remember that in America, 70 for, 70% of people got even one. It doesn't matter if it was one or two or three or four. It doesn't matter. What is in that? Mm-hmm. Because there's something about that connected to so much that's happening in this world. And, and it's really weird whether destiny does its thing when Pluto comes to the end of Capricorn and Aquarius, we see a, a dip in the birth rate. Same thing happened during the Revolutionary War. We see not a lot of new births happening. We see Mm -hmm. a huge decline in civilization. 
we see a huge decline and and it's all happening in front of people's faces and they're just kind of like no i, mean, I don't, don't want to look the old yeah. way and there is yeah. that old way is if you really tap in it's already been buried in the grave and all the people that are in the aware already know and have already been to that grave site and already have every year been putting flowers on that grave you know like it's mm -hmm. gone but there's the illusion up that it's still running and it's running because the collective is still running it in the illusion. And that's the attachment you're speaking to. The attachment. And then also the illusion that's running on our black screens, on our phones and on our televisions that literally, I, I don't know if I could give a percentage, right? I would, I, I'm not going to say it like I know, but I would say that it's, if I were to like estimate that, you know, we're probably at almost a hundred percent of it do we even know is really real, mm -hmm. right? Like how much of it is just created and staged and actors mm -hmm. and CGI'd out? World, world, world stage, yeah. World mm -hmm. stage, all of it, the mm -hmm. whole thing. People yeah. have really no idea that it, it would be that easy to do. Mm -hmm. And so that, that that's where we're at is like, Oh, uh, the real it's, all, it's all on the world stage yeah the real awakening we all are going to be at front row seats who are already awake watch that happen and see what's going to happen we we are coming into the in alchemy you know there's the understanding that we are there's chaos and order people think that we've already been at chaos i'm like we just have swung but there's still order we haven't fully even swung the pendulum to chaos yet mm because there's still order right true but this is a, but when you have a when you have an order that's from an illusion that creates i would say when the pendulum swings the chaos will it ever swing back to order is it going to do a triple backflip and not know how to mm. swing back right which it eventually will but i think that's where i get you we're at a time where that's nothing to be scared of either, right? It's in those moments of chaos that free things up. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, but also, you know, there's a huge, there's a huge moment here of uh, the, 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 the longer the elephant sits in the room, the more, the harder it gets. Sure. But do you feel in your opinion, I'm kind of like watching all this play out because I just feel like even from observing over the last few years as I've kind of awakened more, I feel like I've seen more wake up over the last couple of years. I feel like I've seen more people as much as there is definitely a lot of cognitive dissonance and a lot of the programming. I feel like I've also seen more waves of more people, especially in the last year who have been starting to essentially unprogram and start to awaken in their own way and realize there's more than what they're being told. Oh yeah, I would say that that, when we, I think, I think, I would say that most of our complete collective of all of the humans on this planet are awake to it all, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. It's just whether or not the level of using that awakening is at the same. We all have to come. What's hard with Uranus and Taurus, like we're, we've been in since 2018 and it finishes here in 2025 into 2020, you know, it's like we, we're at a point to where it's like, we all have our own values. We all have our own way of what makes us feel good in life and not feel good. But for a collective to come together, which we're already all together, we all see right. what's going on. Even the people that you see on Twitter or anywhere that act like they don't, they do, right? We all do, we're all on the same team. We all feel it. We all feel that it's all weird. It's easy subconsciously to take its side, though, in it. Sure. Right? No side is right. No side is wrong. As much as it is when you come to the real awakening that we're all awake, but it's about the levels of how are we finding... It's, like, really hard to bring the levels of the collective on the same level of how we're going to change things and understand things and that's part of this process at this moment is 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 we're, gotcha. the bars are all up here and everybody's going through this evolutionary process where you know if if we take that model too it's like our species is going through an evolutionary moment here and and whether or not it's going to accept this technological you know source of the unknown 
if we're going to live a synthetic life or not, you know? And I think that's where, you know, the scary part of the consciousness is, 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 are they are they trying to take consciousness away from us, you know? Oh, for sure. I think so. <laughs> like that's the techno like the weird technology stuff that all these big Aquarius weird situations we've been seeing. And everything since 2020 is Saturn and Pluto conjunction and Capricorn, which is so rare. It happened in 1518 and it happened in 1284. Um, prior to that, you have to realize like those are moments where power structures and secret powers are behind everything. And usually it was more human. This is a different one that it's right. not just human, but it's some other force out there that's observing that. And then the other X factor is like, every time we find a new planet, things change. So the last true planet we found was Pluto. And then of course, because it deals with all the things that are conspiracies, death, sex, all the deeper stuff, let's take that one off the list. And so there is another planet. And then when we find that, that that's the X factor that we're all waiting for. Um, the, 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 the actual conscious understanding of what an X factor is. That, that that's how we evolve as species is as, as we keep, you know, moving the ladder of our conscious awareness and our, if you understand it from a planetary aspect, that's how it works. I mean, if you think about it, like the idea that we could finally understand the rotations of the planets with Ptolemy and understand the cycles and retrogrades, like, oh, wow. But like, you know, it was Galileo who truly found Neptune, but, you know, that was in 1613, but now... It was not found until the 1840s. Right, know? right. Like, there's so much more. There's people who are seeing it and might not even realize that it might take another 100 years for people to then verify that they were true. So you can't think that people are crazy at this moment who are trying to go the extra distance. Right. People who are trying to go the extra distance to wake people up and to, to look at things and not be afraid. Those are the people I trust in life. I'm like, you're on, I don't care what side of the fence you are i don't care what your beliefs are right you're on the team of wanting to wake up people that's where we have to start realizing that that's the bars we all have to start aiming for and looking in each other and all helping each other lift our bars up of each other of, of we can all raise our bars all of us there's nobody who's better than anybody at this moment right there's nobody sure. and it never will be right. it's only as best as we all can be together mm -hmm. yeah that's but really we all have point. to start you know we got to start doing that. <laughs> there's no, there's no real organization. If you really, if you want to be honest, there's no organization for right. it, you know? Right. Right. So what do you think, like closing this out? Cause we, we've been all over, which I love and it's awesome. I mean, so what do you think, you know, we're at coming to the end of the year where, you know, it's going to be December, you know, and the next day, you know, we're coming into 2023, which is crazy. I mean, what are your thoughts on what's coming in 2023 that you can give. Cause I know you do like your whole new year thing, but like what little bit, you know, would you spill or would you say, um, you know, that you feel like you see, you know, is coming. We, we are about to watch society take a complete sideways turn in a direction we never thought is possible. We're going to see systems of, of, government systems to financial systems but even more importantly just social systems and and our common understanding of the common people and how we think our society works make the crazy turn that we all have been feeling and anticipating for and our heads are going to hit the side you know window as it's happening and we'll be okay mm -hmm. for those that have been preparing for it but it's going to jolt the idea of what, where is life going to go from here now forward? There is going to be the beginnings of natural disaster moments that are going to make Fukushima seem like that was nothing. Wow. And this is going to be part of the great awakening of us having to find X factor moments until the X factor gets big enough to where everybody finally comes together and dissolves all their bullshit which i don't think is gonna happen until 2024 but there is definitely 2023 realizing x factors are showing up discoveries in space that are going to bewilder us and a bunch of disclosures 
about the stuff that we already knew was happening and mm -hmm. it won't be full. And that's going to really piss people off because they're going to have to disclose so much, but they're going to leave some parts redacted just enough to piss people off. And that's like done by design. Sure. To keep the control a bit. <laughs> yeah. I think that people have to start thinking about not fear, but bring it on, bring it all on. Like, and 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 letting your own inner dogmatic belief systems you're gonna have to face those in the hardest ways of like you know it, you think fentanyl is a crisis the religious and scientific religions themselves are harder than that to get off of right yeah, to, see, wow. to be able to see clearly what's going mm -hmm. on. Wow. That, so that, a lot, that's so a lot coming. <laughs> yeah. And religious, I would say relig religious wars are going to be behind the deeper parts of what you've been seeing. Mm. People, people have been thinking it's been more about countries and all that. It's about ideology, religion, and dogmatic beliefs. And there's a lot more going on than people could even fathom when it comes to why this has all been happening world war three has already been happening right a lot of people have heard a lot of people say that right yeah so it's like but again a lot of this has been manufactured on tv of how it like is supposed to look or whatever but like there's been a world war three and it's that third entity that is now observing mm. Interesting. Wow. So much to, to unpack so much that I have to <laughs> process after <laughs> this interview. Um, well, thank you I know, so much. Yeah, for... Sorry. It wasn't your typical mercury retrograde and this is a great. No, no, no. I didn't want typical and, mercury retrograde. That's, that's yeah. all it's, it's all good. No, I appreciate it. You know, I mean, this is why I wanted to have you on. Cause I, you know, I've watched you, I followed you, I've, you know, seen your style and you know, how you speak, you know, you're super real and raw, you know, you, you've been, you know, predicting all these different things for so long, you know, it's so fascinating to, you know, watch that with your gifts. So yeah, I mean, I just wanted you to be you. And I think that's a huge part of my show is like, this awakening is about your authenticity. It's about being you. It's about, like you said, not looking outside. It's about looking within, you know, going back to like, you know, that, that divine, you know, God source, whatever it is like that divinity, you know, to be able to step into your sovereignty, you know? And so I think you, you know, express that with like sharing all the different things that you shared. And I think more and more people need to be, you know, comfortable, not only comfortable, but like excited about that and you know stepping into that instead of i have to stay in this box or something will happen yeah i i would agree it i think there's there's really that's the only true authentic way to be is fully authentic like you can't care what anybody is gonna you know think and as long as you're not being malicious right you're you're right. trying to you know the needle through this whole message was there's nothing to be afraid of. That's the whole point, right? It's like all these systems are the things that keep you in a locked state, as you just said, like trapped. Yeah. So it's just about not being afraid and, and being authentic and having the best time. This is the best time. I mean, it reminds me when I was in my teens, like, let's go have some fun. Let's throw the freaking bike over the <laughs> fence and let's see what's on that other side, you know? Like, it's crazy how people are, a lot of people are afraid of that in life. And yeah. Even as a teen, I remember like, so even dudes like, oh, they would quiver. My mom, she'll, she'll be bad. Like, all right. All right. Yeah. So the, yeah. So the message is don't be afraid. Awaken to all that's within you. Yeah. And uh, be yeah, open. And <laughs> Yeah, and 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 the the feminine needs a lot of support, but it it's been wild because now the inverse is going to happen, where there's not going to be as many men left on the planet over these coming decades, and it's going to be more women than men, mm -hmm. and men are going to be harder to find just as friends or lovers for other women and stuff like that, like, and even looking at the birth rate at this moment and the stillbirths and and these are all things that are all been said astrologically and that are in the astrology that the divine like the divine masculine energy is is going to be very hard to find and it's also going to be persecuted and it's going and it's it's all going to be the opposite 
right? Like the men will be the witches. And they, uh-huh. you're already seeing that with Alex Jones or all these mm-hmm. other things, right? Like, right? Like they're attacking the men like the witch trials of 1692. So mm, interesting. And wow. Women need to pay attention to that because you all got your y'all y'all got your patriarchy taken down and you all got the things you deserved and there was a bunch of horrible things done and of course this wasn't done by any of us right like right, right. <laughs> like we're using right. history here so it's like what are the women gonna do are they gonna sit by and watch as the men get treated as the women once did mm. I get you. Yeah. And so, I mean, yeah. And so then like essentially how you're talking also about that collective consciousness coming together. It's also like that divine, like sacred feminine coming together with the masculine and being able to be like in harmony and not so polarized. Right. Yeah. And I think that's the whole, it would be an inverse way, right? Like men, men are easier. I think back in the old days to go along because they men are more about their prestige and where they're at in their life and to keep it going and to make have power and control. Right. Right. So if you think about like the witch trials, right. The men who were sitting in the background watching all these things happen were like, well, if the judge sees me or if the reverend sees me like, you know, then I won't be able to go to next week's thing. Right. Some crazy, stupid man, dumbass thing. But in this one, women, you know, it's like, holy shit, like, that's so fucked up. Women are way stronger than men Mm -hmm. when it comes to the spiritual energy, when it comes to the the ability to actually, like, especially see injustices. Venus, you know, has that great ability to be like, this is this is unfair. Men are here to 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 fight where the injustices are at. And so it's the, the feminine that has to lead other feminines but also the the masculines into to understanding where the real fights are like the problem is is that the masculine doesn't know where to where to really fight it's the the feminine that mm. knows where the true injustices are and the imbalances so i i think it's going to be important and i think that's going to be something that you're going to start to seeing is why are all these men who are speaking truth and that are coming out with this awakening being labeled as witchcraft in a weird way and mm-hmm. and also the spiritual community which i've warned and it's already started you we all need to have each other's backs and and it can't just be just light fun tarot readings anymore like it has to be like we all have to look after each other because whether it's the censorship of it that's been happening or the catholic sure. church already prepping up with the pope saying people need to stop looking at this stuff to the governments now using the democratic party as the way is like Oh my God, everybody that's there is demonic Satan or look at what's happening with that clothing brand, right? I don't even mm-hmm. want to say its name because it's got- Yep, I hear you. That that's all connecting to the occult, which- Yep, oh, I know that. You get oh, yeah. that. So guess mm-hmm. what? Guess who they're coming after? Right, the children. Well, at all they're, no, they're all coming after all of us and the children that are into this at all, spirituality and taking it as- right. That it's For dark sure. when we're not using it as dark- it was like used intentionally by certain people to make it dark, to get rid right. of the awakening process. That's the deeper thing that people have. Mm, okay. Wow. Okay. That's powerful. <laughs> yeah. All right. Right. Yeah. And that's where I, and I, I lean more right politically, but I'm just saying that now this is where the right wing starts to go crazy and start to go into their crazy Christian thing and the demonic. Mm-hmm. And, and now they I hear you. They've set up the program to be like the Democrats are right. demonic and then and they use the occult. They, look at how it's gotten straight to the occult. Right. Now the right wing comes in and all their little like George Bushes are pushing up to right. the two terrorists are occult. I occultism. hear you. Yeah. Wow. So again, so paying attention to there. all the all the programs. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Yeah. So again, going back to what we were saying, like th- that awakening is like that sovereignty. As much as you can deprogram, as much as you continue to find divinity within you and keep looking within you and stop looking outside and looking for the answers and programs, the more you're going to be better off is kind of what you're saying, right? Uh, as far as going into what we're going into over the next year or two. <laughs> yeah, because if you think of the program, like, right, like whether it's a, a woman in LA going to shop at that brand that thou that we should not say because 
Yes. To actually praising a dark being as a oh, king. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> um, to uh, a dude, uh, you know, with a, with a cowboy hat on in Texas with an American flag shirt on, there's no difference between both people. They're not doing anything of an ill intention. The guy in Texas isn't uh, wanting to take down the government and the woman going to that store just wanted some clothes. Mm hmm. Both don't want the end of the country. Both don't want the end of the world. Both don't want the end and suffering right. of anybody. It's the programming behind it. Correct. Yeah. So that's the that's the needle we're going to have to thread here is seeing that. Mm. From all sides. I get you. Mm -hmm. So not easy. But that's where I think like the best you could be is be a renaissance man or woman, right? That. You're all those things. Like I can go to Texas and fucking I love trucks. I have two trucks and I have all I have too many cars, but like you know, <laughs> I like I fucking love doing that. But then I also love being in LA and dressing in my nice shit. So it's like but right. you don't know where to be fit in because you're not fitting in anything. You are all of it. Right. You're all of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's a good way to yeah. Yeah, you're all of it. Because we're multidimensional beings, right? So we're right. We're, we're all of it. Yeah, uh, the idea that you can't be something because it's something that you don't like, like ask yourself, why is that a program? Because your yeah. mom didn't like it or because, you know, whatever it might be or your friends will think you're weird or, you know. Yeah, like it's true. Even my girlfriend, she wanted me to go in some girl store and I can be there all day. And I'd fucking be like, let's do it. <laughs> Right. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, it's just like living life. This whole world was meant to be lived in fully, but they have made it to where they concentrate like a virus does on certain parts of the computer system and keep files and keep different parts of the system locked up and overly mm -hmm. concentrated to where the system runs slower and then it, they can take over the system easier. So they, they make people go and you see the migrations of people right now, mm -hmm. like to different states and thinking I'm safe here or I'm staying because I'm safe here. It doesn't matter what side you're on. The, everybody has migrated to a place thinking I'm safer here. There is no such thing. You already are safe wherever you're at. It's just whether or not you're not seeing how to be safe, which is seeing the, that we're all, we're all, we're all being set up. We're all being set up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so again, yeah. stepping out of the programming. And so if you are listening or watching and you're awakening or you've been awake, then I think like you said, it's not being fearful and it's being able to continue to tap into your own sovereignty and continue to step away from all this and help others do the same so that we can build this our essentially newer consciousness and newer earth that we know can be there, but we're just yes. in, like you said, this crazy inversion right now yeah which is fucking badass you know <laughs> yeah i sort of told people i'm like if you really think about it like we get to like change things like we get to i mean that's why i say you know right. having three kids like you know being a conscious parent is so important because it's like they are who is coming up they are you know right. going to be the world like so helping them to not have the programs, helping them to be able to step into like their sovereignty, to own their gifts, to letting them be who they are and not, you know, making it wrong or not telling them, you know, they can't do this or they can't do that. And right. yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, I talk about that with moms all the time. I'm like that consciousness is so important with your kids. It's probably more important than anything else than you realize because they are the ones that are coming into this world. Like we we're halfway through or we're quarter way through or whatever it is. Like they're, you know, the newer, which is why we know, obviously they're targeting them as well. So. Yeah. Cause if you think about it, if you go to have a child now, it's like, well, if they don't take this at the hospital, mm -hmm. they don't do it. It's like, Correct. okay, that's a system that do you think in three years, it'll even be working. Right. No. Right. So you got to think like, yeah, everybody has to like let go of the program. Like it's very mm -hmm. hard for a lot of people. It is. Oh, it was hard for me. It was, and it was, it was a lot of dark nights of the soul afterwards. <laughs> it's hard for everybody because it's that it's super imprinted at the deepest yes. level. And we're never going to fully get rid of all of it because a right. lot of it too is also like what makes us better, like about how we got through those dark nights of the soul. And so we want to keep some of those understandings mm -hmm. of the program and 
you know, like they're kind of like reference points too. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, that whole idea of the program, they're like, well, but if I don't do that, then what happens in 10 years? It's like, wow. Like, just look, how, look how it all <laughs> shut down, you know, in 2020. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it's true. That was the lesson. Like, you, you aimed your whole life down a program that, that, that failed you and it failed. You know? Yeah. So, now what? <laughs> that was, that was the, that was the little moment where, where, where the computer, like, the fan was about to overheat and they were able to kind of fix it. But the thing's teeter tottering. It's like an old boat that's on its last, <laughs> you know, pieces of, of, of wood that are, that are left on the planks that are, that are ready to rot and the yeah. whole thing's about to just shatter. Like, you know, like, and that yeah. happens, mm-hmm. happened in Rome. So. Yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It was great. Yeah, it was great to be on and I appreciate you and you do great work. It's been great. Thank you. Know, you. That we've been friends and following each other for so long now and that you're pushing yeah. all this work and it's just Thank great you. that, you know, there's other people out there that we can all connect with. And yeah, like you said, we have, we have to, we have to help each other. And as other people kind of wake up to this and, you know, they go through their own things, being able to be resources and support for each other and, you know, and the more we continue to have these types of conversations, the more it's not going to be weird, quote unquote, the more it's not going to be out there. It's going to be, oh, that's, you know, that's what's happening. Okay. We're, we're, we're all going through that. Cause like I was saying to someone the other day, I'm like, you're going through it too, whether you're conscious of it or not. It's just the difference is that I'm conscious of it and you're not, (laughs) you know, I mean, it doesn't, and it doesn't make me better by any means. It just means I'm conscious of it. I'm just literally aware that it's happening. Whereas you're looking at little things thinking that's what it is. And it's not. So it's just right. a different, different way of being right. So the more we have these conversations, the more, like you said, help people not look at the fear and be able to move forward and look at the falls and the system collapses and all these different things is a good thing. And know that like, we're going to rebuild because that's what you do in those times versus just wanting to stay in the program of, but I'm comfortable here. I'll just stay here. That's what the awakening is about. <laughs> right. And I would say that it's, it's no longer an elephant in the room. It's a crazy AI robot dressed as a carny <laughs> ushering you to go into Pleasure Island like Pinocchio ended up in. Mm, yeah, well said. I, I, I get that reference. <laughs> so, Yeah, cool. Yep. Well, thank you so much for being here and uh, sharing your gift and, you know, giving us kind of a whole rundown of kind of what's going on and what's coming um i will have everything in the show notes but tell us where we can find you follow you all that good stuff uh high vibe.tv our apps you can just look up high vibe tv uh spiritual network on every platform from roku to apple tv or iphone android or high vibe.tv and you can find all my stuff there my youtube is the leo king and all the other platforms is the leo king awesome uh, yeah network and where i'm at here at the studios this is just my office but we have full tv studios here and we do so cool content every day live stream live chat in the app everything a community the whole nine so yeah amazing yeah so if you're going through an awakening or you're just waking up or you don't know where you are but you're listening and you found yourself here go check out the leo king <laughs> thanks so much thanks so much guys all right guys love light blessings i will see you all soon bye, bye.